Ba, 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 ba. I spoiled it already. Cool. <laughs> I cannot believe I just had it right open there. Someone's gonna look at me and go, oh, whoops. Whoops. Okay. <laughs> nice. Uh... <laughs> Alrighty, here we go. Hello everybody, welcome to the stream. It is the Beyond Hour stream. It is my stream. Uh, today is the 11th of April, 2022. I hope you're having a wonderful time of day. And there goes the music. I hope you're having a wonderful day today. Uh, and I've had a wonderful week uh, coming up. Uh, first full week of April. Uh, rain has struck Australia yet again. Uh, but hopefully it'll be sunny. We've got the Easter weekend coming up. We've got Anzac Day on next Monday. Um, so I'm spending the Easter break with my families. Uh, and that means I thought, well, let's do a bit of a one-off this week. And spend some time wholesome in some way. Uh, without really any huge commitment. So I think I found something that would be kind of interesting. I don't know if any of you guys grew up at all, but... Uh, for me, actually, the fun part, just my my YouTube, um, hold on, I'm, I'm just going to double check as well. My YouTube analytics, if I go to audience, uh, you get to see the, uh, the age breakdown of your, um, of your uh, YouTube, like, viewers by uh, as long as they're logged in. I don't know, it's weird, it's like, if you sign up to YouTube, it's, it's not immediately obvious, but that is the case. Uh, it turns out... Most of my viewers are indeed my age, so it says within the 25 to 34 year category, followed by the 45 to 54 year category. So I actually wonder if so many of the viewers uh, of this are going to even... Maybe they'll know what they are, but I think if you're in the younger category, you're going to kind of scratch your head wondering, what am I going to show off? So let's jump right into it. Uh, I'm showing off today couple of things, I've got a couple of tabs open, but in particular we have the official US PlayStation magazine. Now, of course, I'm an Australian. We didn't get the US magazine, we got an Australian version. Now, apparently there does exist an Australian edition, and I'm not too sure what exactly was uh, part of it, but I thought this would be an interesting one to look at, the US one, um, mostly because uh, it's a lot easier to follow US releases over time, uh, and it's also... Um, easier uh, to show off the cool part of the PlayStation magazine. Uh, not only because we've got a couple of tabs at the top and people have uh, indeed scanned these in so we can read them, but also because the uh, the official US PlayStation magazine, I don't even know if it is, is like properly licensed by Sony or whether it's just they managed to sneak the tag official on it and call it a day. Um, granted, it did get a lot of big attention, uh, but the most important part about this magazine in particular is that it was the first magazine to include a demo disc every single month starting from its original release in October 1997 all the way to pretty much the end of this magazine they were issuing a disc every single time with demos with trailers with things on them to get you kind of hooked on what's coming out um, and I feel like this is a kind of interesting uh, time because this is 1997, so the PlayStation 1 had been out for nearly three years by now. Um, but it's a real uh, interesting thing because uh, cartridges and that kind of stuff earlier, um, you'd have, uh, you know, car cartridge technology involves several chips. It's got to have some, some bit of technology on them. Uh, the tech is probably a bit specific to the game, so you can't really have multi-chip games really going on too much. Um, you know, uh, actually, on original consoles, I don't even think there is a way to um, effectively sideload games. I think you'd legit need the game. You'd need a physical version of the game. You might be able to, um, maybe, I feel like someone out there has probably figured it out, but it's a pretty hard thing to find. Um, but then comes the PS1. The discs are incredibly cheap to make. Uh, and they're easy to package, like it's just a little, you know, with these they're probably just little sleeves. Um, and on top of that, like, the discs cannot extend the hardware in any way. It's purely software and, and music and, and audio and files, but ultimately 
the hardware of the console is the hardware of the console. Um, and that makes these demo discs ripe for reaching the consumer, for going straight, you know, let's, let's not go to trade show demos where we've curated all these things. Let's go give the demos right to the hands of the, you know, the consumer. And so I feel like that's a real fun part about this kind of era was this magazine was basically the first one to go, hey, yeah, this is something that you can toy around with. So uh, I've got queued up. Uh, the first, I don't really think there's too much with this magazine um, in terms of history. I've got queued up the first four. We'll see how we go. Um, probably do three or four uh, editions. Uh, yay! Oh yeah, this will be a fun one. Um, just as a little bit of a history of this magazine, this originally used to be a magazine called um, PlayStation Extreme. Uh, I don't know much about it. And then uh, it inevitably got eaten up by what then became 1up.com, which you may remember in the past, and now it's uh, become, uh, well, I mean, it was bought by a guy called Ziff Davis. Is it Ziff Davis? Two guys, Ziff and Davis. There you go. Um, and uh, they bought IGN, and they basically said IGN is going to be the gaming publication for them. So inevitably, IGN is uh, the ultimate successor to this magazine. Uh, but let's have a fun look. So, if you are on um, uh, archive.org, wonderful website, totally not, <laughs> to totally a bit uh, interesting. It's got a few, quite a bunch of scanned. I think these are um, these are from someone else. Uh, I think they they come up at the end of one in the magazine, so we'll we'll spot that. But they've definitely got um, a good handful of them scanned. Uh, the discs themselves, at least on the PS One side, they're all entirely. Um, catalogued by Redump. So if you're ever curious about playing any of these demos, um, wink wink, nudge nudge, Redump, Redump. Um, but let's start going through just this first, this first magazine. We've got a wonderful cover right here. Uh, you know, the official US PlayStation magazine, formerly PSX. This is the premiere issue. And usually, usually a, um, you know, these magazines try to hook you in with a couple of things. This, this game, oh sorry, this, um, this magazine does the trifecta. It's got the demo disc, it's got, uh, you know, the hit new game, and it's got the strategy guide of the thing that you probably, you know, might already know of. Um, and I always find that's, that what got, what's got me to have a few magazines. I was going to say, I've got a, um, uh, a magazine of, um, uh, Hyper? I think it's Hyper, which is a UK magazine. I don't know how it managed to end up down here. Um, and uh, it had a guide for Soul Calibur, um, I'm gonna say two. Uh, oh yeah, yeah. It's, it's uh, October 1997 for 7 dollars US. Um, it also had a guide for Croc 2, and that was what helped me through as a kid. Let's open it up, shall we? Uh, so, of course, you're going to see a lot of ads. You might see the same ads across several episodes um, or editions of this magazine. Um, it's a monthly magazine as well, so uh, don't expect like too many things to come out between the magazines. But uh, we get these, you know, lovely ads for NFL. Uh, some of these, some of these, um, like slogans as well. Like, just zooming in over here. Like, well. I thought I could zoom in, and instead I have now looked into the void, uh, so never mind. But it says, to a rare few, winning the war means totally dominating the competition. Miami Dolphins 72, Chicago Bears 85, NFL Game Day 98. Just, whoa. That's why I keep going. Uh, I have completely botched up the view. Whoops. There we go. Uh, we got the, this one. This is for Nightmare Creatures, which is a game that I feel like I should play. I got the October 31 release date. That's pretty cool. Uh, <laughs> what is this? It'll take your breath away, followed shortly by your arms, legs, and head. Man, the 90s was a fun time. Um, and then here's effectively, you know, here's your, what are we up to? From the editor. Uh, pretty much the, the PlayStation is where all the hot gaming is. Yeah, oh yeah, yeah, it's like you gotta open up a couple of pages just to get, uh, get in. And then here's an ad for Colony Wars on the side here. Um, 
but I think uh, this this statement here, so with the PlayStation being the machine where all the hot gaming is taking place, it's painfully obvious why there is a need for the most authoritative source of information about this beloved console. In this magazine you will find everything you could possibly want to know about the games, culture and related information surrounding the PlayStation. I'd like to make it clear to our readers that you will get always get our 100% honest opinions about everything and anything. There are no biases for or against anyone just because we are an official PlayStation magazine. I think you'll agree that the coverage and content speak for themselves. Enjoy and see you next month. Like, what a what a wholesome thing. This was like, um, I, I feel like gaming journalism has gone in very different directions nowadays, but back then it was like, and I guess the thing with a monthly magazine is you can't do really too much clickbait. You got your cover, but ultimately, like, you know, you're a monthly magazine. You've come out probably well after the brand spanking new news, and the internet started really growing being a thing here, so what you end up wanting to do is giving the readers some real quality stuff. So, uh, we got Star Wars Masters of Terrace Cassie. Is that, is that it? I don't know. Nine action-packed arenas. They love, they love the the numbers back there. Um, uh, th this one's a fun one. <laughs> Caution: Every CD you own contains the monster. It's just that's a that's a fun one. And then you gotta say CD-ROM. Even your dad's spreadsheet data disk. Good thing these things weren't connected to the internet. I think people would be very very skeptical skeptical of that. So. Uh, any CD though? Uh, oh yeah, so, for reference, and this is a game I'd really love to play, Monster Rancher is a game, um, yes, so what it does is that it effectively checksums the entire disc, it's a very, like, unique idea, um, and, uh, and then it, it effectively generates a monster somehow based on that checksum of the disc, I don't know how, like, whether it can analyze any content or whether it is just fun random stuff uh, but the, I guess the key thing is that if it's like a, a an audio CD or something it'll be the same every time um, and so you can find some lists of like uh, albums and people will go this album gives you this monster this is a rare monster only available on this Iron Maiden CD and it's amazing and then the best part this recently got ported to Steam and obviously the CD functionality is not as easy to, to pull off. So what they did is that they've actually like pulled like album metadata off Spotify or somewhere. And in game there is now a list of so many albums to which you can get the monsters that would have happened, that would have appeared from those albums. It's a, it's like a really like, you know, yeah, that's the only way you're going to port it effectively. But it's, it's a really like interesting and of its time idea. I'm curious, there's bound to be some other kinds of games like that. Uh, so we got some contents here. Pandemonium 2 is going to be a game that will come up a bit. This is this is four pages, by the way. They they managed to snag four pages for this Treasure of the Deep. Uh, excuse the page fold here. What's the missing ingredient from action and adventure games? Salt water. <laughs> like, yeah, okay. Shark infested Great Barrier Reef. How many sharks are in the Great Barrier Reef? I don't think there's that many. I don't think there's much coral there either, but sure. Um, so, uh, we're gonna have some some new news here and there. Uh, a lot of people love their sports style, so you're gonna see sports style show up quite a fair bit. Um, but you might recognize a few of these games as we scroll past. Um, obviously this one. What, what is this? It's to a human what headlights are to a deer. It's just a picture of, like, Midgar. It's amazing. Um, Oh yeah, the letters as well. The letters. So this is the best part about magazines, is when you get a letter, like, you write a letter, send it to them, and they'll answer it. PlayStation DVD! I got my PlayStation! Sorry, yeah, my name is Hien Nyo. Hien Nyo? I, I'm terrible, sorry. I got my PlayStation about two months ago. I heard some of my friends saying, You can play DVD movies on the PlayStation. Is that true? If so, then I don't have to buy a DVD. Can you give me an answer? Unfortunately, the PlayStation will not play DVD movies or games. There is talk that whether, whenever a follow-up console for the PlayStation is released, and it will have DVD drive. Man, that is a that is a good call. Good call, then. Uh, also, yeah, I th this is a this is a fun like issue from the the um, you know from the late 90s where people complain 
And yeah, the, the Blu-ray on the PS3. The PS3 was like the cheapest Blu-ray player for the longest time for some reason, wasn't it? I have no idea really why. Um, I, I, oh, I, wait, hold on, excuse me. This is the first, this is the first thing. This is the first magazine. And then Wikipedia goes, oh yeah, they're the first magazine to do demo discs. And then it says here, oh, I'm a real big fan of PSX magazine. I want to know if you're starting to make PSX magazine with demo discs, just like PC Gamer. Well, maybe, maybe it's the first for the PlayStation. Maybe, maybe we'll go with that. So I think it was a new thing for the time because uh, you might've been able to get away with floppies. But I don't know, so, um, but yeah, I like this, uh, this letter on, uh, someone complaining about Japanese art, uh, being just better than the, the regular art. Um, let's scroll through a little bit. Ah, yes, everyone likes their top 20 list as well. They, they, this will just constantly keep coming. So, uh, here are, especially like, okay, so just remember, this is October 1997. So some of your favorite games are not out. We've got Crash Bandicoot here, you know, Tomb Raider. Um, what are some other ones that I know of? Everyone loves those sports games. This is a best-selling list, so there's nothing. Um, yeah, before the internet is pretty pretty wild as well. It's still like, I mean, the internet was a thing. I remember growing up with like a, a dial-up connection, at least in 98. I remember having some access to the internet, but that was, that's pre-Google. You know, you don't, you gotta know websites back then. Um, I also love these, uh, this most wanted of like, you know, all these games that like people would love when they're about to come out. Um, actually no, some, some of these are already out. I think Symphony of the Night's already out. Um, but still like, you know, a number of these games did really, uh, did really hold up. I also love these, uh, editorials. Uh, just more marsupial madness is on the way. There you go. Hux Adventures is the son of Zeus. Um... And then here's something neat, so the game, the magazine comes with this demo disc, and uh, they've actually described the six things that are on the demo disc. Uh, I, so this demo disc has six items, you might find more or less on some of the other ones. Um, I also like this uh, bit of how, you know, when the game is coming out, uh, pretty much how complete is this demo. So you'll notice that somewhere later on we've got a demo for Fighting Force, and uh, yeah, it's a little it's a little bit not representative of the final thing, but uh, it gives you some instructions. Um, this is a bit of a blurb for the game itself, like for what it's probably going to be when it comes out. Um, this one's a bit interesting. It's a fighting game, a beat 'em up game, but they don't have like all the characters' moves implemented. That'll be a fun one. Um, Brap of the Rapper is uh, one where I'm very certain it had already been out by now, but still. But yeah, this is a, this is 100%, this is a very, very specific for the demo as well, and stuff. Uh, so we'll go through that a little bit. Um, oh, this, this ad! So if heaven is anything like Wrigley Field on a Saturday afternoon, then death wouldn't be such a bad thing. MLB 98. Ooh, ooh, what, what does that mean? What does that mean? So, and then we get some previews for just some other kinds of games. Uh, I've never played Death Trap Dungeon, but, uh, you know, developed by Core, they've got stuff. American ads are so wild. Hey, here's a superhero ad. It's like, it's pretty, you know, normal as it comes, apart from, uh, they've stuck the Sega Saturn logo in there. Pand Pandemonium 2 is a, a game that, like, I know I've got to play, but I just never have. I have played Ray Tracers though, which is a, a a slightly hard name to to deal with nowadays. But uh, yeah, no, that's a that's a cool like little arcade driving game there. I've not played Jet Moto 2 though, and MDK that that's been on my to rot list. But yeah, it's kind of interesting just like seeing a bunch of games and some of these games as well. Like uh, I think the fun part about these magazines is that there's a piece of history. You'll sometimes see some of these games and. It, what the um what i originally wanted to do was actually like try and find a game that i played recently and then um kind of go oh this is like a, a beta version of the game effectively like you know pre-release but i thought it'd be actually fun to just go through the magazine just like what do you what do you get out of it 
this, this Gex ad. Gex was pretty big. Gex and Croc. You're going to see Croc so many times in this. Um, but yeah, like this is this is kind of inspiring me to like really like get into a lot of these older PlayStation games as well. Just because like, you know, someone someone here like like uh, Nightmare Creatures, I, I said I wanted to, to play it at some point. I just read this bit off the top of here and it goes, Viewed from a Tomb Raider-esque third person perspective, Nightmare Creatures plays like a cross between Doom and Resident Evil. The player must run about the game's vast levels, throwing switches, finding hidden power-ups, and of course, slashing truckloads of beasties to bits. Uh, complete 90%. Yeah, yeah. Fourth quarter 97. This is already, like, how... Uh, I assume they've played demos. So when, like, someone says, like, it's feature complete, like, it's ready to basically just, like, go gold. Um, maybe they're fixing bugs. Whereas, like, maybe a demo like this is, like, oh, it's missing music or, uh, not all the levels. Have been, like, they've openly said they haven't done all the levels yet or something. Um, I love, um, as well, uh, just, like, uh, oh, oh, I got the music up. This difference in audio quality or audio levels between my music as well um oh this controller as well remember when everyone kept memeing on like what the ps3 controller was going to look like when it was about to come out and it's just this third party controller <laughs> i swear i swear ever feel like driving a porsche trademark one two the alps gamepad for playstation trademark trademark game console offers you the power performance and handling you've been waiting for <laughs> Uh, how do you hold this? How do you hold this? The best part as well is that like, so so this is 97, um, the dual analog was like moments away from being announced. That that thing was almost about to come out, so all of these third party controllers were just so moot very soon. Um, Ace Combat 2, I've played the first one, I've not played uh, some of the others. We go, man, they snuck it in, they snuck in another ad right in there. Um, Tell me about any other games that you know of. It's kind of interesting as well seeing games that are in the 2D kind of perspective as well. Um, I don't know, because it felt like when the PlayStation came out, it, they went so hard into making all of these polygonal based uh, games. Here's a 50%. But it's ready by Christmas? This is an October magazine. That's crazy. Uh, what do I think to... To lay out this magazine. I I feel like they probably knew that like they didn't have much to say about Fantastic Four and Overboard. So they dropped it back a little bit and then said, like, here's a spot that's like third page. Um <laughs> oh no, what they do the Duke. I know it's just because they haven't scanned it in right. Look at that, they're advertising the Nintendo 64 version. I love this as well. Like, these are both ports of the 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 DOS game. And Yet, the PlayStation 1 gets 34 levels, the 64 one gets 32 levels, but uh, the N64 one gets 4 player split screen. Um, so, and also they didn't even call them the same name, so it makes it very confusing, but it is indeed, it is indeed two separate, two separate things, two separate, well, the same game effectively. Okay, now you gotta turn your head to read this. What, what is this? When he asks for a donut, Get, give it to <laughs> What is this game, G Police? Have you ever. Yeah, maybe they just ran out of bits. And, and that, I mean, granted, the Nintendo 64 version is like usually usually the better version, but sometimes it suffers from the audio is not as fun, or um, sometimes it's actually they chuck more stuff on the PlayStation version for some reason. That is a. That is a 90s ad through and throughout. Along with this one, I don't know what I'm even looking at on here. Uh, I think it's actually like, a, are these the editors? Are these like the magazine people like mocking what happens in the game? This game's just called Versus as well. What a what a wonderfully like on t on point name. Who's the toughest in the hood? Yeah. Uh, f felony eleven seventy nine. See, we start to get. Mid PS1 is a wild time though, because like people figured it out. People really figured out how to make the PS1 work. You play like early PS1 games, it's just like, oh. Also, like, you'll you'll sometimes note a couple of games that just, you know, have achieved cult status. Police Noughts is one, where like they've actually spoken about um 
a few games that might not get released in uh, in the in the US, and it's just they start off with police nords. And I mean, like, this is before Kojima like incredibly took off. Like Metal Gear Solid was like you know every everything out the window now. That's his magnum opus. But like police nords, like it's a real sleeper game. If you know about it, it's it's really neat. Um, PS3 is- oh yeah, and PS3 is also like a real crazy time. I'd even say like the PS2, like, somewhat. Although early PS2 is like such a jump. I actually, um, uh, so- so the original, uh, disc I was gonna try out was just the one with Monsters Inc. on it, because I played it last week. Um, on that disc, it also had a trailer for Jack and Daxter, and it just blows everything else on that- on that disc out of the water. I mean, granted, you're getting PS1 trailer, quality levels for a PS2 game, but it's like you look at it and you go, wow, like, that's really impressive. And then it's just like, it's Monsters, Inc. <laughs> um, Test Drive is another game as well that I've got to like really try out. There's actually one of the um, earlier demos will have a Test Drive on it, so we'll see if I, if we should see this off. Yeah, it's Croc. I've played this one. Oh yeah, also, just while we're at it, reviews. Um, <laughs> needs more tackling action, yes. Uh, but you'll see reviews of, um, of, of games, uh, I don't think I'll ever play Croc again on, on stream, maybe we'll. Uh, don't be fooled, this is no kitty game. Uh, Croc is a game that, like, the graphics do really hold up, so whenever people go, um, you know, gorgeous 3D graphics and 50 plus levels is, uh, maybe a little bit of a stretch, but sure. I think it actually, I think it's 45. I think it is not 50, but sure. They list them um, on the, the the box or the demo that there's like 200 maps, which is also cheating. Um, but yeah, I love this as well. Like, this is the Power Glove, but for the PlayStation. Like, would you would you dare play with that? Would you dare like have your hand there? That is not a not a comfortable looking thing. Um, I love this ad as well. Now Wayne Gretzky can face what over 600 NHL players fear most himself. Oh, can you see? Usually, a lot of these games say the wrong thing. Um, I remember there was some game off the top of my head, and it advertised that it had like 60 hours of content, and everyone complained that like, no, the game was definitely beatable in 30 hours, and on re-releases, they dropped it down to 40. So that, you can indeed get people to change how they advertise their games. Um, Abe's Odyssey is another one that's got that cult classic status. Um, never heard of this one though, so. But, uh, I love, I love how, like, even they complain about the translation. And, uh, it also, it ends. Yeah, Final Fantasy VII is a great game. Especially for its time. Also, you gotta, you gotta keep advertising how many memory blocks that thing takes off, because they will. <laughs> what? <laughs> like, okay, okay, when, when people go, like, oh, you know, they don't necessarily, you know, like... <sighs> What's the thing? You remember when, when, uh, Doom was being, uh, yelled at by politicians? This doesn't help. <laughs> hey kids, get one free. It's a kid in this time crisis box. The most accurate gun available for the PlayStation console. Time crisis is a can't miss proposition. I wonder, this is, um, the same kind of NES light gun technology as well, isn't it? Where, like, the screen will flash a color and then this has to detect whether it's in a white square, like it's not a sensor bar kind of deal. Um, yup, there we go, more exclamation marks makes it better. This is still an ad. Um, I, this is the selling point. Full 3D po polygon environments surround you with full 3D polygon enemies. That was, that was the buzz phrase. We were running out of bits, so polygon was the one. Uh, this is a like baseball name through and throughout. Bottom of the ninth, 97. So, by the way, three ad, three pages in a row of Abe's Odyssey. Th maybe it's a fold out. Maybe maybe uh, this is uh, one. Also, happy birthday. Um, uh, who's the guy? Who's the guy? Jeremy Clarkson, Grand Tour. There you go. It's his birthday today. I swear. No, oh, maybe maybe UK time. No, I'm pretty sure it's today. I have played Real Fishing. It is a tough game to get into, I'll tell you that. And uh, here we are. We got some fractals in the back. Just to tell you, Pandemonium's the game. Porsche Challenge. They've reviewed so many games in this. Wow. 
Wow, so many. Uh, and then uh, here's this whole part on uh, Ghost in the Shell. Here we go. We got an interview with a uh, with the uh, people who made the game. That's cool as well. Uh, <laughs> send the year 2029. We are dangerously close to that. Um, was this game even localized yet, or were they just interviewing? Oh yeah, they must have because they're talking to English people doing voice acting. Uh, neck hair was was a. Uh, I don't even know what that word was supposed to be. Meant to be bristle. This is Formula One Championship Edition. This is uh, very confusing names and stuff. And uh, now we get into a, a, a miniature walkthrough. Like, uh, and someone's going to yell at me. I never found Yuffie when I did my Let's Play of the game. Um, so they're showing off like a bunch of tips that probably would have helped me as well when I played through the game. Um, not with too many stuff. But, uh, definitely, uh, oh, get this other page loading. Future graphics? I, I really want ray tracing to take off. I don't know if it ever will, like, in this console gen, which is gonna be rather unfortunate. Um, I can, I can safely say these games felt amazing. Like, cause, like, this is, um, like, I was born in 96, and I tried learning how to read but i was definitely wowed by just like the visuals and like this is all flashy ads like they really wanted to show character models like they're just like upscaled renders really they're not really doing anything that's you know out of line for the system there's so many screenshots of the game all over the place except i don't know what's going on with like this one right here that was a bit wild but it's just like you know everyone was so proud to show their game like here's an ad for vr baseball 97 and they just go ham. There's like 15 screenshots right here. Uh, also, while we're at it, cheat codes. Uh, I think, uh, did I show off the level skip? Maybe I did. I don't think I actually showed it off on stream, but I definitely did do it um, uh, just to like try and get the screenshots. So that's cool. Everyone likes uh, having some cheat codes thrown in. Tricks Archive, there we go. Lots of, lots of stuff. Gex! Everyone likes Gex. Here you go, have a, have a password. That's the, that's the real fun stuff as well, when you can just like show off Ridge Racer. And then, uh... This, this one's not even a tip, this is just like, if you played the game normally, and you beat like the three courses, or four courses, you'd be able to like do bonus courses where you go backwards. That's a fun, fun thing, by the way. Um... Then we start getting into some, some stuff, the spoon controller. At least these guys acknowledge that the spoon controller is not particularly great. <laughs> also, whatever this is. Is this a VR? Or it's a head-mounted TV, and it's 300 US dollars back in 1997. That is wild. But uh, then here's a, here's a set of speakers that matches the aesthetic of your PlayStation, as well as also this thousand dollar TV. Amazing. Head grabs of the future. Oh, yeah. It jutted out a bunch. I don't think that'd be good for your eyes, actually. I really don't think a CRT that close to your face would be good for your eyes. Like, props for trying, but yeah, nah. <laughs> Man, we, we just we just getting like Neon Genesis Evangelion as part of my PlayStation magazine? Sign up! Put your parents' name right here. They know kids read this. Wow. Here's a giant croc ad. Also, I have some Final Fantasy VII figurines just in these little bits here. Massive croc ad. Here you go. 50 environments. 50 whole environments. So, you've been warned. Watch out for these hot titles. So, that's cool. That's cool. Anyways, I think with that, Cloud Sword is way too big. Oh, 100%. It's so big. With that, I think it's a good opportunity to... There's my list. Uh, I do not have this right on the ready. It's almost there. Uh, Alright, well, time to find it the old-fashioned way. Is that the top of the list? Bottom of the list? Is that the bottom of the list? Nice. Cool. All right, let's get that demo disc out. Let's let's have a go. Checking out what is on the bit here. Let's scroll over. Oh, that is the thing. I really need to make sure I prep that. 
PlayStation. There you go. And some audio. Uh, so this is the official US PlayStation Magazine demo disc. Uh, you know, these are early versions. They have not completed the SEA testing cycle uh, to go, but I, I, there's a number of these games I'm pretty sure they're out. Oh my gosh. Whoosh. Whoosh. Imagine just putting this into your console and being like, wow, I paid $8 for this instead of what the regular, um, I guess in the US, would it have been 40? Would it have been 50? And then you get introduced to this menu with some almost key gen kind of audio. So pixelate. Oh yeah, 100%. Like, you look at this, I'm like, it's a picture for ants. Uh, so let's go through each of them, um, just to show off. There was a intelligent cube to start off. They dump you with some, some controls, and then just expect you to figure it out. Now, this game, uh, CRT rendering is put definitely, definitely. I think, um, you lose a bit of, uh, lose a bit of fidelity by, um, you know, chucking it on a HD monitor and especially running off an emulator where effectively you've got the rendering output right there. So this is Intelligent Cube Demo Disc. What a, what, what a magical name of a game. I, I love this as well. You can try and go into the options. Nah, nah, don't try it. Don't try it. <laughs> it, ain't, it ain't going in the options. So we look up the rules of the game. And, uh, Forbidden Cube, Advantage Cube. So we just check out the basic rules, how about that? They're nice enough to give you some, some, you know, actual in-game instructions. Some of the other demos, they just rules. chuck you right in. The concept of the game is to try to capture the cubes. This is some remarkably crisp audio for, for the demo disc the as well. You can mark a spot on the stage by pressing the X button. By pressing the X button again, the player can deactivate the mark. Beer. The game is played by marking a spot and then successfully deactivating the spot. The oh my gosh. Now, let's try to capture a cube. First, mark the spot where a cube should be captured. When the cube is about to land on the marked spot, press the X button. The marked spot is then deactivated and the cube is captured. Okay, that sounds easy enough. Repeat this to capture all the necessary cubes. If any cubes are left to fall off the stage, the number of fallen cubes will be calculated on the block scale. Every time the, the number of fallen scale. cubes exceeds that of the block scale, the player loses the last row of the stage. Oh my gosh. It's weird seeing PS1 games running at 60 FPS as well. Like, I, I know it's literally cubes, but, but still. When the player is avalanched by the cubes and falls off the stage, it's Oh, he is gone. He is out of here. So, uh, did you catch that, by the way? This 800. Th this game is... IQ is measured against the player's oh. efficiency in capturing the cubes, as well as the total number of cubes captured. Okay. Sure. Ooh, I get to figure out how smart I am. That's fun. That's fun for a demo. Okay, how smart am I? Probably not at all. Also, I guess having two players are very... I was gonna say it's a nice to have, but no. <laughs> It's not. It's not there. <laughs> so, uh... It's just gonna chuck you in. We're on stage two, just straight up. And, uh, I hope you understand how to play this game, because I sure don't. Uh, I'm just gonna try and stop the blocks, but they're gonna keep... Do I, do I go for the black ones, or...? Like, it's making, it's making the music. Oh no, that knocked it off. The black ones are very bad, apparently. Okay, well, how about I use that to get out, heck out of the dodge. Oh, and the green ones get rid of my spot. Uh, so I 
think I've got to knock that one. And then try and make a pathway here. While also... How much space do I have left? Oh, I've got a bit. Okay, so I, I, I think it's effectively try and knock off as many blocks as you can while also still building a pathway through. I think that's the goal. And then the black ones are just going to punish you if you're trying to go too far back. I don't know what the counter on the top right really means. Or the counter on the top left. But, uh, sure. I guess that's a bit of the demo, is that, like, what am I actually looking at here? You know? The game just kind of happens. You're playing it. You gotta try and understand it. Oh, 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 he's going. Uh, excuse me? Uh, excuse Oh my gosh. Uh, excuse, excuse me? Excuse me, game? Twenty four hundred. I did they just pull a a, a demo meme? Because sometimes they do that. All right, how smart am I? Well, <laughs> it's better than zero. <laughs> um, yeah. Look for intelligent cube in the fall of ninety seven. Put your IQ to the test. Yeah. Okay. Okay. <laughs> and uh, that's it. it. Boots you back out. So, I hope you appreciate that, because, I don't know. I don't know what that was. Let's check out Parappa. Or Parappa the Rapper. Do you like Comic Sans? Because these guys love Comic Sans. They have to have Comic Sans, but with a font that lets you draw a triangle. Or that's a delta, and that's actually part of the font. That'd be amazing if all of that is actually just, like, regular Comic Sans letters. Um... Perhaps the Rapper is a game that I just have no idea how to, like, put into a Let's Play form, because you feel like you're doing a disservice if you talk over it. Um, but, uh, Parappa is fun, because it's virtually, like, the first rhythm game. But it's also, like, it tries to let you freeform, and I have no idea how it works. Now you don't, you don't necessarily get instructions, but Parappa is very, like, clear what it is. Um, apart from, oops, apart from, you know, getting your timing right. And, uh, and also knowing that, uh, you know, L means L1. But I, I, I love the fact that, like, with this game, when you get into the bad, um, the, uh, you know, you get, like, bad versions of the audio kicking in. It's really nice, just like, you know, how these songs get all dynamic. And also the fact that you can... You can try to improv. I don't know how to do it, though. I think, I think if you try and repeat it like that, it works. Mm. I'm getting there. I'm getting there. <laughs> think about it. This is so iconic. It's on the first demo disc. That's apparently- I don't have rhythm. Oh, 
Real reason salsa. I mean, granted, yeah, like a lot of people knew about Parappa at the time. I feel like it is a definitely a game that's uh, you know, it's iconic. It's got a direct sequel on the um, sorry, an indirect sequel on the PS One. If anyone's played Unjamalani, uh, which is uh, much better of a game because uh, this one plays a bit jank, but it's got the the, the vibe. Uh, and then the game just kind of goes like, I mean. You know, you can you can try again or not. That's pretty much all it is. I have no idea how to get the cool, because uh, it it's not just like doing well; it's doing improv well. So, Tomb Raider two. I will eventually play this on stream. But I'm check this out. This is a non-interactive preview, as it describes there. Count the time. Okay, it's nine fifteen right now on the minute. Uh, the time is cut off. By the way, the date is cut off. Um, Doom Raider 2, okay, uh, is that showing off a level in the picture? I don't know if it's, if it's like a, a, you know, assets that ended up being in a level. So it goes demo mode, okay, so Lara's swimming, she climbs out, she runs forward a bit. I don't believe this is actually like part of a, a level, I think... I think they've just created this hallway just for this demo. It's definitely a, a nice looking game though. She gets in the water. She swims to the left a little bit. And then the demo ends. Available 1997. Are you, are you sold? Are you, are you sold on the game? This is coming out the next month. <laughs> that, they didn't even let you like play like one level. They didn't even let you, like, look at her attack or climb on anything. She just swims out of water, gets back in more water, and calls it a day. Which is amazing, so. Listen, out of all these demos, the Parappa one is the best. We've got Intelligent Cube, we've got Tomb Raider 2 at the bottom. What else we got? we got Fighting Force. Alright, understand these controls, because uh, it's very hard to understand. Uh, but they did say in the manual, or in the, um, in the manual, in the magazine, that, uh, not all the moves are actually in the game. Uh, this one is also a core design game, which is kind of interesting as well. Um, I don't know, they managed to get two in. Hope you like the options where you get to get shot, apparently. I'm glad I can do that. One player game. But, uh, kind of neat, you can pick your fellow. We're gonna be Eliana, because those those body proportions are amazing. Apparently, uh, so some of these demos, I feel like they lack music. Like maybe they're supposed to be music as part of the disc, and they just never did it. Um, obviously, every like this is a beat 'em up game, I believe. Every beat 'em up game needs to start off with a. You firing rockets into a crowd. I gotta, I gotta put it down somehow. How do I, how do I put down the? There you go. I, I, I never know how to play beat 'em ups. It's an awfully silent game, isn't it? Like there's traffic going past and there's not a single word. She just does a leg sweep if I hit X and circle. Oh, sorry, cross and circle. Oh yeah, 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 yeah! I I love beat 'em ups with the with the names as well as like just making you feel better. Oh my gosh! Why can I like push him all the way? Give him a leg sweep. I have nearly lost a lot of health. Oh my gosh, that run! <laughs> let's see, let's pick this up. So what does he attack? Just X. Bonk. Let me in, let me in! <laughs> oh my gosh, they've come at me! Oh, there's two people, so do the sweep. This guy's the crusher, apparently. Uh, I don't know what... It's triangle. Oh, triangle is like an attack behind you. Okay, so it's like punch and kick and then... Jump. Okay. She brought a gun. Well, she did have a rocket launcher right at the beginning, so maybe there's another one over here. 
Oh. Oh, dang. Okay, he is under the truck now. Okay. I, I wonder if maybe they'll make the demo too hard as well. Because sometimes they did that. Ooh, that's a combo and a half, apparently. Am I going to blow up the, the truck by kicking it in the wheel? I am kicking your butt, Baldy, and a banger. And that's another Colin. Okay, this move works. Well, oh, there's another guy. Beat him ups in 3D is, is a, it's a, it's a relic of a time. I don't think anyone tries it as much now, or at least they'll have the camera so much higher up. Like it builds personality, being a, you know, just over the head. But the leg sweep. This is like you have to do this move. I don't know what that one is. Sometimes she just does a does a, a leap. Whoa. Try me. Okay, they tried me. <laughs> Do I get back up? Or is the demo just uh, gonna be a bit brutal on me? Yeah, the... Wow, it just... It'll just kick me out. Okay. Well, I hope that gives you a... <laughs> Some inspiration for that. Ace Combat 2, or as uh, it was originally, ref as the first game in the series was localized to be Air Combat. So if you didn't, if you didn't think this was a sequel, well, what is? Uh, this game, you gotta toy around with the the buttons a bit, but uh, it's a very very nice looking game. And wasn't it already out? Wasn't Ace Combat 2 already out by now? So just chucks you into a into a level, you got a gun, you got a zoom, and then you get to engage, you get to, to rudder, there's a little map, I forgot what the button was, probably circle, whoop, he's gone, he's gone, let's see, I, I'm never the best with pilot games, get him, get him, get him, Get him! Come on! Get him! Yeah, bingo! Oh boy. This game was never the same after a certain event, was it? Nah. So. I, I love, by the way, how, like, you get locked to five minutes. So, I think there is an objective. In the end. This game looks great. Like, yeah, it's very, very, like, blocky polygonal on the city, but, like, it, I think it kind of works. It really does work. Uh, there was a guy somewhere in my view. There he is. Let's get him. Let's go get him. saying damn in my kids game my kids magazine for kids how dare they I guess that's the thing like can you get away with putting like mature rated games in your in your demo disc I don't know if you could so I think you're exclusively bound to like T rated games and Parappa the Rapper that game transcends ratings boards I don't know that game they, Parappa the Rapper gives me like mild nightmares Oh, I just realized I I'm stalling. I'm actually stalling <laughs> real hard. Um, so, uh, but Brad the Rapper gives me nightmares because I, I always worry that I'm going to, like, poop myself at a petrol station. I have actually done it once before. I, I not, like, poop myself. <laughs> as, as in, like, really having to go. Really having to go for, like, for, like, a toilet break. So... Play the game, play the game, you'll, you'll, you'll know what I, 
what I mean. And uh, if you ever, if you ever actually lose in that level in level five in Parappa the Rapper, it's just like the most amazing thing. Yeah, I I feel like um, I know a lot of people really did enjoy um Ace Combat Seven. That was the one that came out like a couple of years ago. Um, it's just kind of interesting to like see where it came from. Um, but playing the original, the original was really like really nice and held up. I guess it's more just like, you know, it's, it's dead silent right now. Uh, the, there never used to be a story as well. It, it was always just like, you know, we're, we're attacking the base or something like that. At least that was the first game. Maybe they do start going on for more of a story. Where's he at? There he is. Let's get him. Five minutes is actually, like, a very nice amount of time. Because if this was, like, a floor demo, you wouldn't get this much, like, playtime with the game. They'd give you, like, three minutes. Or, um, or, or sometimes as well, the other types of demos you'd find are, um, kiosk demos. So it's, like, I, which I guess is kind of the same deal. Um, but especially, yeah, you'll find a lot of, um, like, ROMs and stuff for, for games on the internet. Uh, or at least, you know. the warning because I'm flying like way too far out. Wait a minute. There's a red square there. I have flown into the clouds. I am flying out of the clouds. I was going to say the actual objective is like down here. I'm like chilling over here and like there's a little <laughs> three targets. Alright, I got I got pull I got pull miracle. Uh it's gonna be a crazy miracle if I can manage to pull this off. I don't think I am. I think I'm just gonna like stall out. You know, I'm stalling out. Ah, oh, down he goes. Uh, alas, Scarface. At least they don't kick you back out to the demo, though. We'll get him next time. Yeah. At least they don't kick you out to the demo. So, last one is NFL Game Day '98. This is the um. I gave this one a, a bit of a vet earlier. Uh, this is the other kind of demo that you see. Show me the gameplay. Show me the gameplay. I'm gonna show you the gameplay. He's a real sportsman. Dude, motion capture in 997 was wild. He's 25 years old, man. This is PlayStation's only polygonal football game. They never made any others. They want to get the players' feedback. They want to get their interest. They want to go as far as to get their movements. And so now when somebody plays a game, they're playing a simulation of an actual football game. Whoa, a simulation? Whoa. They, they didn't even give him a ball to motion capture with. They, they could have just motion captured the ball. I, I mean, he's got a ball. I've never really, like, gone into, like, NFL games. Probably because, uh... You know, See, now with the not the right country, you know, but... How good they understand the game in turn make, which allows them to make a better game. So obviously a lot of work goes into it, a lot of preparation. But I, I really love like how like sports um, definitely like grabs onto technology, like just in general. Like they, a lot of people really like um, the idea of like these video games. To get some realistic plays that Pittsburgh Steelers ran, defenses that we ran, specific plays that players really need in the game. You look at the game and you go, well, heck, we run that same exact play. One of the you know biggest things in we run that play, right? Is the zone blitz, so they're going to incorporate some of the zone blitzing into the game, different types of coverages that, that we play now. NFL has definitely got like a, a fair bit of uh, you know overhead that you've got to know in order to really understand. I feel, but uh, September second, nineteen ninety seven. Gameplay. Show me the gameplay. Maybe this magazine came out the month before. Who knows? And uh, that's uh. That's the first, uh, magazine, basically. Uh, pretty much, uh, whoosh. 
pretty much, uh, it's, uh, it's kind of a array of, like, games that probably were out by now. I think Parappa definitely was out. Um, a couple of demos, but I think in terms of the magazine itself, I think there's a lot to, to really like about it. There's a lot of, uh, stuff going on with it. It's got the format pretty much down pat. So, why don't, uh, why don't we give it a, the next one a, a bit of a look? I thought I was going to be able to go through them a bit quicker, but no. So, right on the cover of uh, magazine number two, we've got, a uh, Rapper the Rapper, everyone's favorite. Uh, we've <laughs> already done the demo, though, so, uh, you're going to have to, to <laughs> understand on that one. Given the amount of effort it takes to score, it seems only fitting that it's called a goal. Like, what? This is the same type of ad. They started the same one. Hold on, like, let me just go back to this one. Page two, man. Page two. This is the same type of ad right at the top of the magazine. Come on, guys. Come on. Um, we got a, an ad for uh, Rob. Lightfield's Young Blood Search and Destroy. I think they talked about Young Blood in the in the last one. Uh, it's for Windows 95 as well. It definitely looks like it could be. Uh, what is this? Seven super soldiers and eleven real-time combat missions. So, so what did they say at the beginning of this this one? Because this is uh, this is the uh, November issue, which might have come out earlier, but still. Uh, well, they go. We're entering that time of the year when the stores are hit with swarms of software titles competing for your gaming dollar. Last year's selection of games was good, but it really pales when compared to the amount of both quality and revolutionary entertainment we can look forward to this Christmas. Perhaps revolutionary is a strong word to use, since we have different definitions of what that means in reference to games. Let's just say that there are game concepts explored in the latest bunch of titles that are clearly experimental, but are executed in a way that satisfies hardcore gamers and attracts newcomers alike. It'll be interesting to see the long-term effects of titles like Monster Rancher, Parappa the Rapper, IQ, Fly By Wire, Parasite Eve, and Bushido Blade. It's also refreshing to see tried and true concepts taken to new levels. I'm talking about 2D side scrollers like Castlevania, vertically scrolling shooters like Raystorm, and classic fisticuffs action with Street Fighter Collection. In other news, it comes as no surprise that being the official magazine covering the PlayStation, the accusations of bias- oh, it's the same kind of bias statement. Okay, sure. But that's a that's a real like interesting uh claim there of like it'll be interesting to see the long-term effects of Parappa the Rapper, uh Parasite Eve and Bushido Blade. And I'm just like, man, those games of whoo, Parappa is just like it's a genre defining game. It's got that, you know, that on it. Uh Monster Rancher, I don't know if it's genre defining. It's kind of overshadowed by um uh by Pokemon in particular, um which Granted, yeah, like, that's pretty obvious, but, uh, also, I guess, Final Fantasy VII around the time. Uh, IQ, I don't know. I, I, I've, I've never heard of it before, so. But Bushido Blade, I believe people really like it from, uh, it's a fighting game, isn't it? Top of my head. I've never played it, but I hear it's pretty good. Here we go, Nightmare Creatures again. And we got the exact same, this is, this almost looks like the exact same page, but no, it's, it's definitely a different, different edition. So we got a different... Contents, uh, still advertising guns to kids. Tomb Raider 2 exclusively on PlayStation. They used to always have, like, people cosplaying as Lara, like, a lot of the time. Um, these are the same pictures, by the way. Um, so, this was an interesting thing as well. The original Tomb Raider was on, um, the Sega Saturn, I believe. As well as the, um, the PlayStation and on DOS. Um, on... Uh, and, and I believe it might have supported Windows, but I'm not too sure. Um, but, uh, they dropped the Saturn. This was around the time when, yeah, like, Saturn games were being dropped pretty hard. Um, kind of because, because, uh, Sega was in talks of, like, just coming straight out with the Dreamcast, which is, was a gutsy move that ultimately didn't work. Um, but also on top of that, like, I feel like no one actually did. The Saturn sales are just not doing as well, so... It's just right to just drop the Saturn. Um, that being said, though, uh, I, I'll still play it on PC. Uh, but yeah. Bang for your buck as well. The latest in the pricing war comes from not the hardware end, but the software end. Sony has established the power price line 
which puts many of their high-profile titles at a reasonable 34.95 MSRP. These are three games that they talked, to, they showed off in the last demo. I swear. Also, here's Final Fantasy VII's big numbers, and this is this is something I think everyone should like. If you forget, like Final Fantasy VII was big at the time, 330,000 units in its debut weekend, um, which is like that's crazy for its time. Uh, Sony has likened the release to a movie opening with Final Fantasy VII gross, uh, grossing 16.5 million US dollars, which was more than the highest grossing film Labor Day weekend, G.I. Jane. Oh, snap, that's, ooh, I shouldn't. <laughs> should, I, should I be concerned? <laughs> Life imitates art, we'll say that. Um, but yeah, that's a lot of money. $16.5 million back then was like a crazy amount of money. And then suddenly like every, Every, like, big studio decided to try and, like, chase that. So suddenly, like, these RPGs became a bit of a, a bit of a thing. Um, just, like, to, to really be mass-marketed. I don't know how well they, they lasted, but... Uh, here we go. So, what, what, what do people say? So, your new magazine is very cool. I really like the gear section. One uh, suggestion, you need a coming soon list. Did they do the coming soon list? We're looking into it. it. Won't be anytime soon. What? I guess I got the previews accounts, but um, say thanks for writing a mag that is the same high caliber as the machine it's devoted to. I love everything about it: the layout, ease of use, color coded genre indicators, accessible tips section, etc., and the innovative gear column. Please don't change anything. For a long time, I've been a fan. Wow. Okay. Cool. Did they ask anything. Here we go. I just picked up Volume 1 and was amazed at the great coverage of MLB 98 and Game Day 98. I was equally surprised at the lack of a Madden 98 review. I can expect the same- oh my gosh. Uh... Ah, okay, so a game got delayed. Oh, this as well. We've received a number of responses from readers who were none too pleased with the rather short video of Tomb Raider 2 in our first demo disc. On the bright side, the good folks at IDOS are working on a playable demo of Tomb Raider 2 that they promise will more than make up for any video shortcomings. That sounds like something to look forward to. I, I would definitely say at the time, and, and me in particular, I actually, I have a PS2 demo disc. Um, I don't know what the what the demo disc had specifically on it. I can try and... Uh, I know it had a game called Stunt Driver on it. Um, and it had Ratchet and Clank. So I, I know it had that. It had two levels of Ratchet and Clank. It was like a crazy, like involved demo um but i don't know uh specific oh unless archive.org unless someone's already got it they haven't described what's on that demo disc but it could be it could be i haven't tried it um but i would definitely say that um any time uh there was a playable demo that was like that grabbed my attention so much more um here we go i've saved up uh, for a year to be one of the first sorry be one of the first people to get a Sony PlayStation. I purchased the actual PlayStation, another controller, an RFU adapter, and a memory card. Plus, I own eight games for a grand total of about $835. Now, so, uh, here Sony's coming out with a PlayStation 2. This time, Sony's gone too far. Besides the PlayStation 2, Sony should offer a less expensive alternative, such as an add-on like the 32X. I believe Sony should think this through first. That is amazing as well like retrospectively like the 32x just seemed like the weirdest life support like part of the sega genesis like i think the sega cd has its place but the 32x is like it's a weird one because it did like provide some capabilities but i don't the only game i know that like people remember for it is knuckles chaotix and maybe any game that leverages that and the c the sega cd i think um corpse killer is one of them that's the only one I can think of. And Corpse Code is not a game worth playing, don't worry. Um, but uh, I, I love how uh, it's unlikely that they will release an upgrade like the 32X. Sony's software pricing policies will keep owners like yourself happy for a long time. And that actually was like, I mean, in 97, that was a good call. Because um, I think that there was a decent overlap between when the PS1 ended and when the PS2 started. And there were a lot of like great titles that came out right in that last like bit of its lifespan. Um, I noticed some PlayStation games don't play on the CD player. Why? Some games like Soul Blade have good music and you can't listen to it. That's also a fun feature if anyone um, remembers uh, some... Uh, there we go. So, you can only play music from a game CD if it is Red Book Audio. Yellow Book Audio is a lower grade method that cannot be played on CD players. Uh, one and a half thousand in modern day money, that is a lot. Oh, jeez. For, for the one guy who's paid 835 Granted, I guess, like, 
how much? I think the PlayStation One was um, three hundred. I want to say it was three hundred US dollars. It might have been two hundred, but like at the time, it's like that would have been a fair bit. That's that's um, yeah, a fair bit. Uh, definitely not the PS3 levels. PS3 was way too expensive. They're not not a 3DO as well or a Neo Geo, but a Neo Geo is a luxury item. That that one's on you. Um, I hear I heard that X Men vs Street Fighter for PlayStation has been cancelled. Uh, it has not been cancelled. So okay, sure. We got that Star Wars ad again. We got the top twenty. It really has not changed in the last month. Uh, none of this stuff has really changed. In fact, they've even talked about the uh, marsupial madness still going on. So I see that. Um, but yeah, I still feel like there's a handful of games in here that I'd really love to try out. Um, Porsche Challenge. Those are some very fancy looking sc screenshots, by the way. Like, almost everyone has the same car in the entire game. This is in the pre-Gran Turismo world as, as well, so... Uh, so the demo disc this time around, we'll get a spoiler on the games in it. We've got Armored Core from everyone's favorite... Nah, it, it's by Sony. It's by Sony, guys. Sorry. <laughs> it's by Sony. Uh, Colony Wars. Um, the Armored Core one. Uh, it's a bit of an involved demo, though, so who knows. Oh, Ghost in the Shell did get a US release. Ah. The more you know. We've got Cool Borders 2, Crash Bandicoot 2. This is one that I think a lot of people would, you know, be very, very custom with. We have a comic in here, except this is that G-Police thing. Everyone likes the comic. Uh, we got Croc. We're gonna have a Croc demo. There we go. Madden 98. Two minute warning. Bah, bah, bah. Uh, and then this wonderful controller again. Ghost in the Shell. Uh, and NHL Face Off 98, which might be a eight players really. Eight players on the on the PS1. Availability now. Good on them though. There's a lot of nows in that list. So cool. Uh, Test Drive 4 again. It's a preview for a brand new game, Resident Evil 2. This one, man. I, I, I've i never played any of the Resident Evils, but like... Dude, that's a... Uh, I, I hear 2 is just like a crazy good sequel. So, good on that one. Uh, what do they say here? What do they actually say? What will they, like, hook me into with? Res 2. Here's what you can expect. The demo has no opening FMB. It said, we join rookie on the job Leon Kennedy on a zombie-filled street littering with burning cars, police riot shields, and other debris. Although his riot gear affords him a certain amount of protection, Leon must sprint through the chaos, eventually finding shelter in a gun shop. After a near-fatal run-in with the store owner, Leon is free to replenish his supplies. Okay. Uh, Tomb Raider 2, uh, we'll, we'll get to that at some point on stream, don't worry. Uh, what are these games? Motor Racer? That's some... I, I love, like, this era of, like, when you chuck sprites on top of something polygonal, and the polygonal stuff will be very, very basic. Or, in some cases, you go full, uh, sprites. We got Duke Nukem again. Now, Crash 2. Crash 2 is, like, and, uh, and I'm gonna mention this in the demo, but it's, like, Crash 2, like, remarkably looks very modern for a game. Like, yeah, you can kind of feel the, the polygon count and the, the textures in some places. But it's remarkably like high quality for like when it came out, um, and also it supported the uh, dual analog. Uh, I don't know if it does for the demo. We'll see. We got a game called One. I don't know anything about this game actually. I think I've heard of it, but yeah. Tactics Ogre. Oh boy, everyone likes uh, likes uh, tactics games because uh, Final Fantasy Tactics was that even out by now? I don't know if it was. G Police is that G Police finally there. Monster Rancher, we've got a preview coming out at the end of the year. By the way, yeah, they, they do, um... i jump all the way back. Wherever the Monster Rancher ad was. Here we go. Like, they'll give you the ad, but, uh... They don't even stick a date on this. It's just kind of like, eh, at some point it'll be there. I think it's because, like, stock availability. And then I, I killed it. Cool. Cool. Nice. What am I clicking on? What am I actually clicking on there? Alright, we'll go through the long way. We'll go through the long way. Don Yu website. Danger website is really a link right there. Now I've got to load in things using 
archive.org mildly slow connections. Nah, they do good work preserving this kind of stuff or at least having it available to look at and read. It's like looking at a library, you know? Like this is an error. Alright, here we go. So MK Mythologies. Oh yeah! They made a platformer about Sub-Zero and it's got these wonderful full motion video like cutscenes. I've never played this, but like I remember hearing someone talk about it. And it's just like the most like bizarre um I guess like tangent from from a fighting game. Just uh, does it only go down? Uh, no, 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 it goes left to right. Oh, oh, you're always, you're always heading some. Yes, yes, you are always going down. <laughs> so yeah, uh, mythology controls essentially the same as previous MK titles, which is something of a mixed blessing. Uh, I assume these guys have actually played demos of this as well. Although MK fans will instantly feel at home controlling Sub Zero, jumping with the direction all does take some practice. Unlike MK4, the characters in Mythologies are mostly 2D digitized sprites. The backgrounds, however, are texture map polygons which scale and rotate in a convincing fashion. It's just legit 3D from the most part. Like, it's on the PlayStation. Um, players will encounter 30 different enemies as they battle their way through Mythologies' 8 unique worlds. If the game is a hit, Midway has hinted at the possibility of more Mythology styles. I don't think they ever did. <laughs> so, Street Fighter in 3D! They did it with Street Fighter uh, plus Alpha EX. I think that's the way you read this. That is an alpha, but that is also an EX, so... <laughs> what, is, what, is this? what else is the same signature Street Fighter gameplay? New? Lots. Crack your knuckles and welcome 12 all-new fighters in the biggest Street Fighter ever. Playable bosses, 7 different play modes, and a total of 23 characters. That's a lot of characters, man. For the time. <laughs> the upside wenches, the downside the plank? What? Uh, I don't know if, uh, I, I love how EA still has that NBA Live, um, franchise going on. Like, I know that there's, um, 2Ks, NBA 2K, but Pitfall 3D, oh boy, oh boy. Um, I love this as well, like, this is a, you know, because this literally is a, a classic in the same way as, uh, the Namco Museum. This is Midway Classics. Um, so, play... <laughs> PlayStation invades Hong Kong. We just, we have, wow, do we, do we have a picture of Will Smith and a reference to G.I. Jane in the same magazine? I, I swear, I wasn't even trying. I wasn't even trying, for sure. Uh, I guess a uh, Tokyo Game Show, it's a biannual game showcase. Does that mean every two years or every half a year? Who knows? Uh, also, Grand Torismo with a with an O. Maybe that maybe it was spelt with a U to avoid something. But uh, I look at this guy and I, <laughs> man, I'm a bit afraid. Uh, and then yeah, Europe also having an expo like crazy. And yet here it is, Gran Torismo, Sony's upcoming racing title, is shaping up to be one of the most comprehensive rating, racing titles available. With over 120 different vehicles as of this writing, licensing issues may affect the final count. Each one modeled after a real-world counterpart, Grand Turismo appears to excel both in realism and gameplay. Manufacturers range from Chevrolet to Honda, and vehicles range from low-end family cars to supercharged racing machines. Players compete only against the same class, of course. That's not even true in the game. Um, looks straight off of ESPN! Uh, but yeah, no, like... I don't think, like, Gran Turismo is a weird one, because I don't think people, like, 120 cars seem like a, a nice, like, fun part on the box, but also the fact that, like, it meant something really meaningful for the game, which is, like, you could legit just, like, play the game with completely different cars to someone else. Like, just, uh, well, unless you choose the, the, um, the Supra, like, everyone. Everyone goes with the Supra in that game. Gran Turismo 2, a lot more fair, but Gran Turismo 1 is like, nah, it's a Supra, that's it. Um, Parasite is another one that's, you know, definitely held up. Uh, Tsukaigi? I don't know, man. Monday one, uh, has a DLC for each Ah, oh, dude, yeah. Yeah. It wasn't even, like, just that one. It was just, like, um, Grand Turismo 5, I think was the first one. that just started, like, chucking on, like, DLCs for extra content. Um, and, uh, yeah. Which is a shame, because it's just, like, how feature-rich is Grand Turismo 4? Uh, and yeah, microtransactions, oh boy. Um, Forza gets a little bit of a, like, a pass for some reason. 
Uh, I don't know why, Forza does do like the, the car packs. I think it's like they sprinkle in a free car pack and then a paid car pack. Um, and they never feel like they're like locking off any like huge bit away from you. Like it feels like there's a good array already in the game of, of disciplines going on. So they just kind of seem like they're flashing out. And yeah, yeah, lots of free stuff helps. Yeah. This game, this game, oh my gosh. The hand draw graphics perfectly match the gothic tone of the game. But, yeah, no, like, I... Lacks killer Japanese packings? Oh, really? Also, too easy? They call Symphony of the Night too easy? Symphony, I mean, Symphony of the Night definitely, like, can be easier. Oh, yeah. Not enough dexterity tests? That's another one. That's a, that's a fun term you'll sometimes see when people go, like, skill check or get good. Nah, man. Not enough dexterity tests. Right there. Uh... It's quite annoying, yeah, yeah. But these guys love it, so. Um, Do they say anything about the, uh, yeah, two major twists? Won't go into detail. Oh yeah, the two major twists are great. So, if you haven't played Symphony of the Night, like, you are missing out. Like, that game is, anytime anyone says, like, Dark Souls, or any, like, weird game in, like, the, the mid-2000s, um, it's got, like, twists and all this stuff, man, no, like, this game. Symphony of the Night. It's great. I mean, it's the reason why Metroidvania gets to be a term. Because Metroid existed, and then this filled this awkward space where there wasn't a Metroid game for eight years. And it was way good. And it's not really a Metroid. It's... Uh, do you do a Discord for this Twitch channel? Uh, I don't have a Discord for this Twitch channel. Maybe I should. Maybe I should get like someone on and go, like, you know, check this out. Um, yeah, no, I, I usually go, like, pretty... Just, Commander Solo, and then uh, if you want to give me feedback, you can just like send it to me, <laughs> like anywhere really. Twitch DMs are open, YouTube, I'm pretty sure. Does YouTube still have the mailbox feature? I think it does. And then like, I know some of your chaps on Discord, so that's alright. <laughs> Resident Evil Director's Cut! Why are the choices cut still missing? Re, it's still censored! Uh, I don't know anything about this unfortunately, but... That'd be a little disappointing, actually, if there's, like, two different versions of the game just, like, going on. Uh, rather than releasing Director's Cut, in my opinion, Capcom should have released, uh, should have, A, release, re-release Resident Evil at Sony's, oh, at Sony's grade as hits price of 1995, or be distributed the Resident Evil 2 demo and maybe five bucks a pop. The demo for five bucks a pop, by the way. Like, I understand you're paying for this, um, this demo disc as well, but you're also getting the magazine. It's eight dollars. Tekken 2. Dude, Tekken is a cool game. Clock Towel. Everyone loves Clock Towel. I actually, I have played this one. This one is hilarious. The translation is, is hilariously bad. And yeah, it is such a short game. You will beat it in an hour and a half your first time. Um, and it's not scary. But it's actually kind of neat. Like, how some of it works. And the environments are like decently detailed. And it's a bit of a puzzle. I like it. But yeah, they're, they're totally right. Where it's like it's a B movie kind of thing. The translation's a bit rough. Uh, what are they hovering over? I swear. Hovering over some magical stuff. Here's MDK again. One day I will play MDK. Here's that Gex ad again. Herx Adventures. Too cartoony, man. Missions within missions. Hilarious weapons. And yet you go with a three. It's one of the sleepers of the year. I d I've never heard anyone like talk about this beyond the, the John Tron video of Hercules games where he like... Just, you know, says the couple of hundred of them and then moves on. Um, but, uh, yeah, it, it might be an alright game. It's Gex. I actually, I would like to play Gex on stream. There you go. Inside, a, inside an info. I'd love to play this Gex. But it's a, it's a great one. It's also, is it actually on PC? I'd play it on PlayStation. Just Tomb Raider advertising, am I right? <laughs> Jeez. But we got Jimmy Johnson VR Football, where, uh, I guess, uh, too, too many money plays, too easy to catch the ball, and the graphics suck. Okay. Customize your own plays feels like a very, like, nice thing for a sports game, though. So what is this? MTV's Game Brain, the first official PlayStation strategy guide on home video. This is your newest ammunition in mastering PlayStation's most popular games. Don't take your hands off the joystick to get gaming tips. Just toggle between your VCR and game console. That feels like you gotta have a VCR hooked up at the same time. Um... It's 90 minutes, but they tell you how to get good at Crash Bandicoot 2 and Tomb Raider 2. And Parappa the Rapper also includes an extra special preview of... Is 
prep is, I guess prep is still not out yet, is it? Vi video profile of the phenomenal Lara Croft of Tomb Raider Trademark 2. I swear, Tomb Raider advertising is just like, you know, well, we'll just say that. She doesn't even get, does she? No. Tomb Raider 3, she does. As like a tease at the very end of the game. We'll get into that. Oh my gosh, they put Jimmy Johnson's VR Football 98 ad right after the 2 out of 5 review. And in between, with a Lara Croft in between. Very unfortunate. And then they stuck Madden in <laughs> afterwards. Oh no. So. But uh, they, they thought the other um, title. The NFL Play? Was that? Game Day, that's the one. Man, so many NFL games. It's three of them already. NFL, sorry, Marvel Super Heroes, there we go. Excalibur 255580. Listen, if you're gonna make a game in the future, there was Ghost in the Shell earlier. It was slated for um like 2029 was the the you know the year it was taking place. If you pick 2555, like yeah, people are not gonna remember that. Like what happened 500 years ago? Like Shakespeare wasn't even 500 years ago. <laughs> this is a bit shy. Bikini clad civilians, that is a... Uh, and there's a, a plus in these guys' eyes. But, uh, Area 51 minus the cool aliens? Okay. More sports. Do you like sports? These guys like sports. Critical depth from the developers of Twisted Metal, Jet Modo, and Warhawk. Okay, sure. There's another ad. This is the same guy yelling and the page is moving over. I don't know why. Maybe it's a fold-out. Oh, it's 100% fold-out. <laughs> okay. Oh my gosh, what is going on with the thing? Okay, alright, it's fixing itself. So, uh, have some fun accessories. The enhanced ASCII pad. I don't even think it lets you type ASCII characters. They're all uh, got ASCII on them. I think it's just because the company's called ASCII. That's a little bit of an unfortunate name, isn't it? That'd be like if I called uh, my company, like, Unicode Technologies and it's just like... <laughs> I don't, I don't uh, Is Unicode a trademark name? Are you not allowed to, like, call your company Unicode? Kind of rightly so, to be honest. Uh, Golden Nugget. We've got a, a mystery starring Adam West. Excuse me? Alright, keep this one on the radar. i got to check this one out at some point. And of course, we got to review Parappa the Rapper. Yeah, it's short, pretty easy too. The, the tunes are too catchy. That's a bad thing. But legit, Parappa is like, it's such a pleasure to play. It's such a fun one. And do they even say, like... Like how it is as a as a gameplay thing, because this is a fun bit. Is that rhythm games were not a thing, so this is currently like this is yellow. Uh, I forgot what what they were coloring yellow. We'll scroll back for that one. What were they coloring yellow stuff? This was all the action stuff. Oh, gosh, where were where was the? Did they call it an RPG? No, they couldn't have. They couldn't have called it an RPG. Ah, oh, where'd the colors go? What's what's the color guide? What what does the colors mean? Oh, here we go. Puzzle. It's a puzzle game. Parappa the Rapper is a puzzle game. Because like what what is it? What do you describe this as? Rhythm games were not things, really. Some genius decided to hit buttons at the right time of the music. And then also make it really catchy. So they've called it a puzzle game, apparently. Um, but yeah, they just call it, it's a, it's a new... What, what is this? Well, I, I will freely admit that the basis of this game seems just plain silly. Punching buttons in time to a preset rap rhythm does not sound like the stuff of which great games are made. But there is a quality to certain works of pop art which transcends greatness. It's the kind of thing that brings thousands of people to movie theaters at midnight again and again to watch the Rocky Horror Picture Show while Kenneth Bar uh, Branagh's Hamlet sputters for a few weeks at the, uh, and quietly moves the video. It's called Pure Enjoyment, and Parappa is its new mascot. Like, this guy's right, he, he's, he's picked it up, but... It's just like, oh, dude, it's a tough one to describe. Here's Intelligent Cube. Yeah, it's a game. I don't really know if, how to describe it, but that, that is a legit puzzle game. Oh boy, we got the 1 out of 5 on this one. Does anyone remember The Lost World on PlayStation 1? I think I've actually seen someone talk about this one. And you'd be surprised that, like, this is actually a beat-em-up game where you play as a dinosaur that takes up half the screen. 
I think the whole point of the game is like, it's um, I guess it's an evolution style game. So as in your dinosaur gets bigger throughout the game. Um, or alternatively, you just play as different dinosaurs for different levels. It might be that. Um, Aki, uh, here's Bushido Blade. There you go. There you go, have an interview of, with Prepper. Or a bit of a bit of a thing. How to rap cool while simply rhyming along with the masters will help you beat a level and won't earn a cool rating. Doing so, as Matsura San reveals, requires improvisation. Return to previously beaten levels and just cut loose, creating your own improvised rhythms. This should nudge your rating from good to cool. Sustain the cool rating long enough, and you'll enter a special freestyle mode. If you can freestyle for the remainder of the level, you earn a crown. By collecting multiple crowns, you can access new animations, cinemas, and even a mini dance game entitled KT and the Sunny Funny Band. Dude, legit, like that, getting cool is a mystery to even me, so, I don't even know, but this is a, that's a nice, like, bit on, on Prap of the Rapper, and it's definitely, it, it was big in Japan, like, you know, for a while, so it's great that it got localized and, and down, uh, to Europe and stuff. Oh, here we go, There's more Croc, you like Croc, you gotta get crystals, uh, once a hundred crystals, you get a life, pick up the five crystals, get the six gobbos. There you go. These ghost races somewhere in like level three. Uh, this game is like, it's, it's a weird one. Croc is a weird one. Uh, that's all they're going to say, but you know, sure. Now a fighting game, a fighting game. If you look at Bushido Blade, it's like, yeah, no. Good on him for describing everything about this game. Wonderful wire mesh of what's going on here. This picture is about to give me nightmares. Jeez. Jeez. And then have some, have some more cheat codes. Do you remember Gex? We wrote Gex twice. We wrote Buster Move like two times, three times. Which one's Buster Move again? I keep. Oh, Bust. I always keep thinking Buster Move is a rhythm game, but no, it's the one where you shoot colored bubbles. Um, the OG Need for Speed. It took forever to get to PlayStation 1, I believe. Alright, check out this bit of hardware. You can get. What is this? This is a speaker. Okay. More 3D stuff. You can get a plastic gun called the Peacemaker. Lots of VR. Wow. What is this? You get uh, two wireless controllers. Cool. And then, uh, please, uh, do you know any of these animes? I don't. Is that just like a loudspeaker? Like just like, or not even a loudspeaker, but just like a plastic tube? Oh, it actually might. Oh, uh, it might be a legit like speaker in it. Okay. Still. Next month, Cool Borders 2! And check out- dude, they're already spoiling what's in the next disc, jeez. Uh, but you see a new adventure hero, is Croc. And, uh, there you go. So thank you, Retro Mags. That's the- that's the guys who are doing the scans. So, good on them. I think this calls for, uh, getting into the game. What do you say? Don't worry, I've got it more queued up this time. Or do I? <laughs> no, no, it's definitely queued up. There we go. Definitely, I feel like you're getting a pattern of, of uh, how these magazines work. I mean, and in fact, worst part as well. Worst part as well, you're going to see... Oop. There we go. Uh, you're going to see um, a lot of these... Uh, demo to start to look very similar as well like you know start off with a fancy animation but there's only so much you can you can really do um on a monthly schedule someone's gotta like legit program this disc though so where does it come from who made it it's the same intro as last time but this time it's personal We're taking the fight to Africa. This time though, look at that. There's eight things on the list. So let's check them all out. First of all, we start off with Armored Core. This one was like a, a also while I was vetting this, this one was a bit of a more involved demo going on. Um, this font remind you of any company in particular? Why yes, it reminds you of Sony computer. Dude, it's so, it's weird seeing, uh, <laughs> companies that ended up being a lot greater, um, later on. You can't load, they're not letting you load, but you can name your pilot. I'm gonna name my pilot, uh, 
Uh, Ezi. It's Greek. Oh. Ezipo. Ezipo. I don't think you're ever going to see that name anywhere. And if you are, then... Oh, okay. I'm sorry. We got the Raven's Nest. Is that a loading screen? Oh, whoosh. It's a real classy menu. To which you cannot, like, see anything. You just Everything is locked off. Oh, but you can't go into the garage. Where they show off... Man, you know, like, this, this game probably is very involved. And I don't know any, like, at all how it works. There's so much going on. There is so much going on, I swear. You can go into the shop and then realize you have no money, but you can buy more more bits. So, sure. They're definitely showing off the gun. Best part as well, there's two levels. We want you to destroy a chrome gun emplacement. The gun emplacement construction site is located in an ocean buffer zone just barely outside Murakumo territory. Our repeated warnings to halt construction have been completely ignored. Chrome offers only transparent excuses about maintaining security, but their intentions are clearly a preemptive military attack. We now have no choice but to use force. This time we have prepared an AC pilot to pay. It is a prototype of the highest quality. We are counting on the Ravens. Theater of operations? Okay, so. Ah. Uh, so, oh boy, do I, do I know how to play this? Not really. This is, uh, this is a bit tricky. Um, I want to. I want to just highlight. We've arrived at the combat area. We'll leave as soon as your AC is deployed. What is AC? Ar armored combat? Armored. System engaged. You're ready taking a few hits, bro. Uh, but uh, there's no analog control on this one, so uh, you're immediately under fire. By the way, that is indeed uh the range that I can lock on to people. The uh this this giant square that covers the entire screen. You get to shoot, you get to maybe look up, I think. Yeah, you can look up and down with L2 and R2. Okay, don't go over there. What was the jump button? It was like... Was it triangle? Nope. We'll never know. I believe you can stray for the R1. It's going to look a bit weird though. Whoop. I'm already taking fire. What do you do over here? What do you actually do with like these guys? Because they're they're like a bit too far to like hit. You, you actually have to do this. You just have to be like a little bit out of the range and like go ham. Yeah, don't do that. Don't do that. Let's switch to the missiles. Get it. I think the camera's like hitting the wall here. This is... This is taking its time. I'm getting it though. I'm getting it. I've got like a melee blade as well. And I cannot show off this melee blade at all. Alright, let's get this last guy. This reminds me of um... Ace combat that we just tried out as well. Oh. I don't know, it's the, it the mech thing, the green. Green was the big color of the late 90s for this kind of stuff. So there you go, I did it. And I lost money, I have negative $5,000. Cool. I'm rich, I'm loaded. So back to the Raven's Nest. That's kind of really cool that they let you go back for the, you know, for the demo. So you've done that. Now you gotta eliminate the squatters. Blah blah blah. You gotta show off a different kind of environment as well because... I don't know though. I feel like that one demo, like, you know, is the appropriate length, but... Someone said, nah. Nah, go make your demos a little longer. Oh, there you go. Oh, you, you, you have to release X and then jump it again. I keep hitting L2. Some games have L2 and R2 as your strafes. This is, uh, you look up and down, or down and up. But... It, it couldn't hurt with some music. It couldn't hurt with some music. So maybe there's music in the actual game. I don't know if, uh, this was a, a finished demo. 
But this is also, like, this is the first one. Either that or they went alphabetical and they... No, they didn't go alphabetical because Crash 2 is at the bottom. And, uh, they go with Croc afterwards, so who knows. We've got health, and you can seem to lock under people through walls, so cool. Oh, he's not in this room, he's in the next room. It's, it's not the easiest when you don't have twin stick. We're, we're just shy of that twin stick period. But until then, until then. I'm curious how the magazines will actually go about, uh, given... Um, you know, given that the dual analog is like moments away from coming out. And uh, you've definitely got games that start supporting it. I mean, Crash 2 is there. Crash 2 supports the, the dual analog. So... We'll see how it goes. Uh, is this like a non-linear energy bar? Target achieved. There you go. Well, I can safely say I understand how to pilot a robot. This one gives me the money. I, I now have a bit of money. So cool. Do they just like not chuck you out for the demo? It's like, oh, you can keep, you can keep going if you want. Because I'm pretty sure it's still just, it's still just the two levels. So I hit select. I'll call it there for, for that demo. Because otherwise we'll, we'll be here too long. <laughs> you know, that's a bit of content. Let's go with Croc. So uh, everyone knows I've played Croc on, on my channel before. Um, Croc is a... Uh, it, used, it was going to be a Yoshi game, and then uh, they couldn't get the rights to Yoshi, so they instead decided to make their own kind of dinosaur, except it's a crocodile. Um, there you go, Croc Legend of the Gobbos, whoosh! Uh, this is basically a one level, um, one level demo. Kind of highlights exactly what's kind of confusing about the game. So first of all, the UI is a little different. Like Croc's animated in the top and the little Gobbo. This is the most cursed, like, puzzle I can think of. To, like, just the first thing you see. So you got the box, you you can kind of, you know, you do the box. Pausing doesn't really mean anything. Uh, obviously, you can hit the enemy. For reference, you can't turn while... while spinning. That's something I noticed that you can in the final game. But notice how that, that ledge is a bit too far away. So you're like, oh, okay, I push the box. And then you're gonna, you're gonna watch me, like... Okay, I, I didn't push the box enough. You're thinking like, oh, why are you, why are you like, being a bit, you know, cruel with your time in the box? I want you to note, so hitting this button lowers the platform. Okay, you see it lowers? Oh, I didn't even, I, I, you know what's the best part? I didn't even notice it dropped down to the ground. So I kept looking at it thinking that like you gotta, um, <laughs> you gotta push the box back. But nah, nah, it, go, it goes down here, so never mind. Little Garbo. That's cool. It's interesting, I guess, games from this time, like, when they're not feature complete, they're generally still, like, pretty, like, on the money. There's nothing really, like, too drastically different about how Croc is, you know, looking at controlling. Apart from, I'm, am I gonna... The, the, the platform is still as janky as ever, though, I will say. Dude, it's such a shame what happened to this company as well. Also, just these tiny rooms, and then, like, ah, yes, let us go through a black room and have to load for a bit. It gets real bad on the actual game as well. I love the sound effect as well, where it's just a guy going, boy, 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 boy. I swear. You can hear it too, right? Let's see one bit of Blundo ASMR. A little Q-boat enemy, why not? Uh, so, I think there was a thing um, in the in the um, magazine saying that like, Oh, okay, so you get six gobos a level. And also, there's always one gobo locked behind a wall where there's five of the colored gems, the colored crystals. Uh... You can collect the crystals, but they're just like Sonic. Where you drop them all when you take a hit. That is a fun font, though. And, uh, you can hit that gong to end the level, and... You're not actually required to... To, uh, 
get the crystals and all that stuff, but you can definitely, you know, 100%, you can, you can do it. It's got keys as well, and it's got this, like, weird platforming. I will say that, like, yeah, Croc, as a game, like, for its time, like, it's a solid-looking game. Like, the polygons don't scream out too much. The lighting is very, like, dramatic. I, I actually really enjoy just, like, how the whole game looks. Like, the fact that, like, this is lava here. And, uh, I don't know, it gives a, there's a bit of a red tint going on over there. I have some, like, darker rooms from time to time. Um, so, it might, it might be a game I play again, but it's a, it's a lot of effort, Croc. This is an incredibly cursed, like, level design as well, and they do it all the time in the actual game. So, for reference, the key is back there. They bait you into thinking that you break all these boxes, but you just do it for gems. So, there you go. I did it. I got all six gobos in this one level. And then, and then he just disappears. The mystical bird teleports people. So, Fox Interactive's Croc is a superb looking 3D adventure, says Game Fan. Oh, wow. The rumors are true, and the word wow was muttered more than once as Croc's brilliant colors and 3D gameplay lit up the room, said Game Informer. Transparencies, ultra clean textures, garage shading, and real time lighting make the game's graphics sparkle, and the music is excellent. Does Gorod imply real time? I don't know. So. That was a neat demo. And that's enough of the demo to, to make me feel alright. We got Colony Wars. Uh, which one was this one? Well, like, it involves firing and switching weapons, so it can't be too complex, can it? Can it? Who knows? I didn't vet this demo though, so we'll see how it goes. Ah, Colony Wars Battle Commences, November 97. The computer game title, okay. Cool, thanks, Psygnosis. Was Psygnosis the ones that did Lemmings, or was it DMA design and they never went to the name Psygnosis? Oh, I gotta log on and begin campaign. Just, nice menu. I, I love, like, that they gotta do the menus. I was gonna say, like, that can't be a loading screen, can it? It's, it's going very slow. Oh! 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 Up I go! Oh, is this a 60... Are you... <laughs> it wasn't ready! It wasn't ready! It wasn't ready for the demo! <laughs> it's a hard crash as well. A select doesn't even do anything. Oh, that is so unfortunate. That is so unfortunate that that is like an actual, like, just, the this game crashed. It, it just crashed on you. Oh, dude, I want to know if they say it in the next one. Okay, Retro Arc, restart it, just, whoo, that is, that, and that's, a, that's a risk you find with some of these demos. I, I'm kind of amazed that, like, a consumer demo manages to crash on you. I kind of don't want to try it again. I kind of just want to like let it be. Just go, yeah, nah. This game crashes immediately. It could it could be as well sometimes. It, it actually can be a compatibility with the emulator. Because as much as like, you know, we want to say like emulators are cool, they play games, yeah, you know, sometimes it just doesn't work out. And uh, yeah, official PlayStation Demo Disc 2 might be something they don't actively test too much against. Ghost in the Shell. It's a full motion video. But it's also... It's a full motion video. I cannot even read that on my end. Like, well, I, I know what it's saying, but still. I don't know a thing about Ghost in the Shell. I never even watched the um the Scarlett Johansson one that they, they did. This was, this was like right at that time of anime. I mean, I've watched Evangelion, so I guess I, I've got that. So to anyone who knows, should I watch the uh, Scarlett Johansson one subbed or dubbed? 90s music was great. Here we go. I'm in the zone. Whoa! It's a tank game? You play as a tank. 
the entire game. You don't you don't play as girl holding guns. She she's just driving the tank everywhere, blowing up everyone. Well, she is in the shell, I guess. That's that's accurate. This, this trailer is like can't stop, man. Ultimate three dement. Did you see that was dimension spelt with a T, by the way? There it is again. Action. It's a shoot-in game with a with an apostrophe as well. Give it give it to us one more time. There it is. It's a shoot-in game. That's a. Uh, Oh boy. Okay, okay, I've, I've read it. I've, I've seen it this time. Oh, I'm now getting a seizure. Cool. We've got bits of anime, which I don't know if they're from the anime. They probably... They could be. They could be from the anime. I don't know, actually. I don't know anything about Ghost in the Shell, really. All I can tell is this woman... Is experiencing quite a bit of pain being in VR. You know, Ready Player One has given people false expectations. And Half Life Alex, apparently. Do I get? I get to just rip into rip into VR more often? Apparently, sure. I I I I'm getting like sensory like overload right now. Like I'm I'm just seeing stuff happen. I don't know too much about the game, but I guess it's uh, you're gonna be in the tank the whole time, and that's that's that. So, sure. Cool borders too. Do so you can hit L1 or R1 on the ground to 180 spin. You can view, jump, hard, turn, and move. Pressing any of the shoulder buttons in conjunction with the directional buttons while the border is in the air may cause the border to perform with a capital P. Any one of the variety of grabs. Dude, I I am missing a snowboarding game in my life. Web system. Web system. Wow. Oh my gosh. Oh my gosh. Jeez. Uh. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Cool borders. Dude, I'm Here pumped already. Can you actually do the half pipe? Oh, you can. I tried out the slope earlier. That's actually kind of cool. You can do the half pipe as well. Do the half pipe first, and then we'll do the slope. Uh, I think they only let you do one guy. You can go over, and it's just like, yeah, nah, man. Nah. But you can change his clothes, which is actually kind of neat. So good on him. Uh, same thing with the, the board as well. I assume the, the music is off. The course is uh, pretty much just one thing. Uh, you force into one board, but you can change the look of the board, which is also like, that's cool. So. Now, do I know anything about how to snowboard? Not at all. I actually, I, not at all. All I know is you kind of have to lean in and that's how you build up speed, but you're also lining yourself up for a jump, except that feels like just what every video Ready? game does. Go! Get up. Drop in and get okay. You can't turn like while you're crouching okay. like this. Oh. Uh, I want to do a sick move. I want to do a sick move. I have... Oh, I'm hitting... <laughs> I'm hitting triangle, that's what. Give us one good one. One go... I'm going uphill. Cool. That was, that was 30 seconds of snowboarding. Did you enjoy that? I'm going to boot into it again, because I feel like, uh... Probably got, like, no impression of the game during that. And it's got the other the other map as well. They let you do two maps. If it was just that, like, just that half pipe, I'd be a lot disappointed. I'd, I'd be like, yep, that's that's a game. But uh, fortunately, there's a little more to it, so I'll show that off. We go. So we got a competition. You cannot freestyle, but you can competition. With Mother Pants Radish, we shall win the competition. That's that's the one. That is the one with the gun, apparently. Uh, so we got Sunset Downhill, where we actually get to compete against people. There might be music that should be playing, but uh, I didn't. It's, I'm not even muting it. That's just they've just forgotten to do the music. Did we get one one demo with music earlier? Like there is Red Book Audio at some points. So here we go. 
Like, it, it's sorely lacking music. But, still. A good snowboarding game goes a long way. It's a little f flickery. And also, you can see me absolutely suck at snowboarding games. But it's a little flickery. But I think it's got, like, a, a decent bit of draw distance that, like, you know, gives you that feeling of speed. Also, I have no idea how to catch up to the people ahead of you. How do you, how do you even, I guess just like watch your, your speed. You are going the wrong, okay, thank you for turning around. Like if I don't touch anything, he goes faster. If I lean forward, he actually slows down. So, is that a realistic snowboarding thing? Like you got, oh, that, they are making fun of me. They are making fun of me, daddy. Can't believe it. Whoop, whoop. Not some, not easy on the slopes. Here I go. Down the slope. That was a very late checkpoint, wasn't it? And then the fun part, the clock is above 100 seconds. So it's just like, oh, what, what do you do? Big slope is always good fun, though. Everyone loves their big slopes. Holy crap, I'm actually catching up to people. I am now fifth. Can I keep catching up to everyone down this wicked slope? Maybe. Good thing I've got like this massive wall on the inside to ride off. And then... Oh, oh. I, I'm collecting ladybugs apparently in the bottom left. And uh, I'm not catching up to anyone else, am I? No, okay, I'm coming good old fifth. D did he say damn it or yay? I, I don't know. He's, he's, he's ruining the day he ever, like, came to existence. And I would too if I came fifth. So. Oh, there's that. We got NHL face-off 98. That's right. You thought you were going to play a sports game? Nah. Or are you? Nah. You get to see... Re this is what real hockey actually looks like. Just, just start, like, killing people over on the sides here. Did you score? What is going on? This is a very, like, harsh camera angle. This is a problem with, like, several of these 3D, um, games. Is it, like, just... You want to be in the action? To show how cool this is, because the resolution isn't quite there? But also, you cannot, for the life of me, like, understand what is going on at any of these camera angles. It has to be so much more zoomed out. Oh, they are very happy. They are dancing on the spot. Power play goal. Wow. That, that It's also just like a police siren. I guess it probably is just a police siren. I thought that'd be like an actual like buzzer though. Oh, the ref was very upset with it. And we're, we're done. Okay. So next up we've got Crash Bandicoot 2. I never know how to how to judge like the, the, the trailer ones. But this is um... This is a actually a legit level from the game if i recall correctly like i'm not too sure if anything is really out of line on this one but like crash 2 is like it's so like you know it's got the music going on crash looks great like really all you can complain about too much is like resolution or a little bit of the model quality it does indeed support the dual analog by the way i'm doing the slow walking right now so like they they didn't even list it in the uh, in the bits but like yeah no this game does indeed support the, the analog and this game this game works with a uh, with the analog going on and you can do the slide this is a crazy how did how did i dash through the the tnt and it was like yeah no nah, that's fine don't worry i'm gonna get that life if it's there it is That was the one thing, I actually, I, I never grew up with the Crash Trilogy, but I played the Traveler's Tales, like, Wrath of Cortex game, which takes, like, kind of elements from all of these games a bit. Um, 
But like the cool part about Crash 2, never mind that we're on an ice level. Ah, you see what I did there. But the, the really cool part, like as just like a playability thing, and like this, this mirror is great. Just like, you know, it's still, it feels like Crash. They even like do that to you just to like really get you to understand that like that's how these things work. Except they start crushing like automatically in front of you, don't they? They show you a gem just to tease, just to really tease. You can't even get it in this demo, I swear. And these are crushing on you, you got a nitro box, and then you see this and you're like, oop. And it just goes right into the bonus, it doesn't even like cut to anything. It's just like, it's so smooth. It's so smooth. Whoever like made this game, I mean I know it's not a dog, but like, everyone who worked on this game like knew exactly how to just make Crash a better game. Like just everything is so much better. And I really love this game, this is probably my favorite out of the, the three. It's just, it's, it's such a great smooth experience. Showing off pretty much a lot of the mechanics as well. Like you got the little boxes there, you got nitros, which are not a thing in the first game, by the way. It, it feels like it's, you know, something Crash has always had, but uh, yeah, nah. Also, uh, this. That's a, that's a secret, I think, only, like, you know, how many people are gonna notice that on their first goes, but yeah. So you get the crystal. And now here's the bit that kind of confuses me. There's two boxes here. I forgot how on earth those boxes get activated. I'm actually wondering if, like, those boxes are activated via the, um, the secret entrance that you go to in the actual game to get the red gem. I can't recall off the top of my head. But there's no, uh, you know, there's no extra switch here, so you reach the end of the level, you only got 72 out of 74. Which, by the way, I'm pretty sure the actual game also tells you your, um, total boxes that you need. Does it actually? I don't think it actually, maybe it doesn't. It doesn't... Yeah, no, it doesn't. I think it's just three that does it. Tells you the total boxes on the, the triangle menu, so. But that's a cool demo. That's all you need. One level, shows you everything, and gets you a bit high to go on. Yeah, like, the game is full of that. Although they don't uh, do a tease for the rest of the... For the rest of the thing. Finally, by the way, finally! A sports demo we can all get behind. There he is, the the man, the myth, the legend. Rest in peace, John Madden. But holy crap. Okay, do you know how to play this game? Because that's it. This is all the buttons. Easy, right? Makes sense. Makes sense. We're loading. Oh, you thought you thought that was gameplay. Nah, man. Nah, it looks a bit too good. Um, the EA games, they, they got a lot of money out of like FIFA 96 or something. Like, somehow they chucked so much money into their sports titles in, like, the late 90s. Um, and, uh, it definitely shows. Like, these games are... Hello and welcome to beautiful Green Bay, Wisconsin, where the New England Patriots prepare to take on the Green Bay Packers. I mean, yeah, they, they know how to make really good feeling games at this time. Um, FIFA 99 is just like, oh, such a great feeling game. I have not played, uh football games I don't even I don't even understand sports so Zed Moss ground the Packers air attack like sure yeah hit the holes that F winners creates C Newsom can contain S Jefferson today can, can I can I like start okay there we go finally started I guess there was a lot of reading I'm going with heads. You son of a gun. So they choose receive. Ah, oh, it's nice to get a little windsock. And it's a full motion video windsock. That's that's nice fun. Okay, okay, I get it. I get it. It's remember it's a two minute demo. I feel like I've spent two minutes just like rotting, waiting for whatever's gonna happen right now. Either that, or this actually is like a two-player demo? That'd be very bizarre. If it's like, I need a second player to like be sitting here. Maybe it is. Nope. Maybe I broke it. Maybe it doesn't like the emulator. Maybe it doesn't like the emulator. I also can't hit select. I think it actually did break. 
I think it actually did break. Okay, I got two games breaking. Two of them breaking. That's amazing. That is absolutely amazing. I'm giving I'm giving that uh that other one a try. Just another retry. And then if it breaks in the same way, yeah, sure. Okay. So um in retrospect, I guess I should kind of just go with this. Um I don't know if I've really go through many more. Maybe I'd find like some some fun parts here and there. Um but I thought this would be a really nice thing just to just to check out. Um and it's definitely like, yeah, it's a window into like an era. Um an era that like you know, it did disappear. It disappeared with, um, digital demos. So suddenly, um, and especially they, they stopped doing the discs, um, really shortly, like I think 2009, because you could just download demos off the PlayStation Network. Um, actually, I don't even know if they did any PS3 ones. They did one, a physical one for the PSP, and that was a bit of a, bit of an interesting one to try out. Um, but they did continue these through the PS2 era, so they do have that. Um, and, uh... And yeah, I, I feel like demo discs are something that really Sony were the only people who even had so many of them, right? Like there were definitely demo discs of, of other on other consoles, but um, yeah, it's a, it's just an interesting era. And and just yeah, combining it with the magazines to get you a bit hyped for these games coming out. You know, it's a monthly magazine, and honestly, like eight bucks US. I guess nowadays eight bucks US seems like not too much, but. I guess also you're you're only getting like part of these games, and uh, I mean if if this if this legit crashes again, that'd be hilarious. I swear this is a this is a, a redump certified. Well, this is era six 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 this time, not one twenty. This is a legit like. The, the best part as well is that all of these games will crash in their own ways. And I, I love that, like, the, the wonderful part of a demo disc is that every game has to basically be its own, like, from boot to, to game kind of demo going on. Even though it's all on the same disc. So they all can crash in their own separate ways. Uh, that's a bit spectacular, but yeah. <laughs> so, um, anyways, I guess with that, I would like to thank you. Oh, I don't have my transition set up very well. I would like to thank you so very, very, very much for watching. If you enjoy this, you can subscribe on YouTube or follow on Twitch, where I will be doing this every week. But not next week. Next week is Easter. I'm chilling with my fams. That's it. I thought I thought you guys would enjoy this just to just to get a glimpse into something. Uh, after Easter, I will indeed be playing something. What will it be? I don't know, because I couldn't figure out anything off the top of my head as well. Uh, but it'll be something cool. Um, so yeah, no, these demo discs are cool, and and just. The magazines are cool, um, and it's an it's an era of journalism that maybe we don't get anymore. Uh, I guess on the one hand, advertising is different. On the other hand, game journalism and writing is very different as well. Um, so I'd recommend just like have a have a bit of a peruse around. Check out archive.org. Check out um, uh, anyone who makes these uh, scans. Retro Mags. They were the guys who did these two scans. Um, and uh, yeah, no, keep on keeping on. Eat your greens, don't stay up too late, and uh, look both ways before you cross the road. Alright, have a good one everyone. Peace.